Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Riddhi Datta, and in this video, I am going to discuss string immutability. We are going to see what exactly is an immutable class in Java, why strings are immutable. We are also going to look at two important concepts related to string, which are very often asked in interviews. That is string pooling and string interning. And at the end, we are also going to see that whether we can use double equals to to compare two strings, why it sometimes work and why it doesn't, and why is it always suggested to use that dot equals method. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, let's understand what do we mean by an immutable object and why. it required in the first place so immutable refers to something that cannot be changed or modified hence immutable objects are ones that cannot be modified after they have been created this is an object whose internal state does not change after it has been created completely it assures us that it will behave in the same manner for the rest of its life cycle now for security purposes and to maintain thread safety we sometimes need that object to be immutable now let's take a look at a working of a string in java and what do i mean when i say a string is immutable okay so let me take create a string in front of you uh and let me name it riddhi now you can see in order to access a particular character in string in java we use this method that is s1.char let's say uh we want to in, in, uh, like print the first character of this particular string if we go and print this it will print r right that means it prints out the first character of the string so basically string is as we all know it's basically an array of characters only if you have coming from a c c++ background but in c c++ we could change the particular character at a particular position in that string right so in java you cannot do that because there is no set method you can't change let's say if you want to change this r uh, to something x right or something some other different character you can't do that here if you at all want to change a character at a particular index what you have to do is you have to create a new string but you cannot change that particular string. so if i want to change this content let's say i want to change the first character to something uh, uh, let's say some character let's a let us say a all we need to do is we have to do s1 equals to a plus s1 dot substring 1 basically now if i go and print it you will see the first character has been changed to a right so basically what it is doing is whenever we are using this method it basically returns uh, the string that is this part from uh, index 1 till the end and i am concatenating this a right at the start so basically what happens it it creates a new string and it returns uh, that new string instance to s1 as a result now this s1 is is not modified in place right so therefore we learned and we saw that in java when it comes to strings we cannot change any particular character in any particular index if you want to do that then we have to create a new instance of the string as we saw it just now unlike in c++ where we had that ability we had that power to change a particular character at any particular index now let's take an another example uh, so let's say we have this string s1 is equal to riddhi and now let's say that we create another string s2 which points to s1 so basically s1 and s2 both now points to riddhi and then we do something like this s2 plus equals to we concatenate some random characters over here right so now let me go and print out s1 and let me also go and print out s2 now since s1 and s2 right are ideally pointing to the same string right and then we add something to s2 you should feel that okay the contents of s1 and s2 both should change as both s1 and s2 are pointing to the same location right so let me now go and run it and we will see exactly why is it not so so if you see the if i print s1 it's still the same that means it was immutable despite me changing the contents of s2 but now s2 has changed right so what is happening over here is both s1 and s2 are pointing to the same location right but now when i concatenate uh, this particular random characters to s2 what happens is a copy of s1 is created like a deep copy of that is created in the memory right and then it is being added then the random characters are being added and that instance is returned to s2 now as a result s1 and s2 are pointing to different locations so in order to prove that i can also go and print out s1 is equals to equals to s2 and that will print false because now both s1 and s2 are pointing to different locations because now we have changed since we have changed the content of s2 therefore s2 cannot point to s1 therefore as a result we are achieving this immutability in strings so now let's take a more deeper look at how this is maintained in memory how java achieves this what is the concept of string pooling and string interning and then this concepts uh, will be more clear to you now if you're looking for a complete course that will help you to get job ready which also covers backend development using java dsa and 
and system design. Don't forget to check out Physics Waller's course, which I'm going to talk about in the next couple of minutes. So this course covers Java, frameworks of Spring, web applications using Spring Boot, working with distributed applications, microservices, DSA, system designs, and design patterns. The course is originally priced at 40,000, but is now available at 20,000 and an additional 2,000 off using a coupon code, which I will provide you. This course also gives you job assurance up to nine months of completion. You will also be making hands-on project along this course with Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, Servlet, JSP. You also get doubt support, 12 hours daily, one-to-one -one doubt support. And along with the course, you also get the Physics Walla Lab access. This is a virtual lab with free access to numerous premium softwares. There is no need to buy costly systems or softwares for real-life projects during this course. We'll also be going to job-ready activities like resume building sessions, mock interviews, etc. You also get mentored by experts from Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, PayPal, etc. etc. It is a 12-month course and as I said, the course fee is 20,000. They have also other courses for Java, Data Analytics, Data Science. So do go and check out their website. The link would be in the description down below. Also, don't forget to use this code to get 2,000 rupees off. And now let's continue with the video. So what Java does or the JVM does is they have uh, in the heap, right? They maintain a pool of strings. So what do I mean by it? So let's say now when you create this string, Riddhi, right? So what, what will happen is it will be, let's say you do something like this string S1 is equal to Riddhi. So in this heap, there is something called a string common pool that the Java or the JVM maintains. So whenever you do this S1 equals to Riddhi, that in the string common pool, uh, the JVM would create this string and then return the address of the string which the S1 would now point to. Okay. Now again, if I do S2 equals to Riddhi, right? Again, so what the JVM would do is it won't again create a new Riddhi in, in this string common pool memory space. What it will do is it will first check that whether in the string common pool there exists this same string content and if it does, in this case it does, right? So it will return the same address. So now if you print S1 is equals to equals to S2, you will see the address is, is going to the same. It's going to return true. So what basically the JVM does is in order to efficiently use the memory, it first check whenever you create a new string, right? Or whenever you define a new string literal, right? What it does is it first checks whether that string literal is present in the string common pool or not. If it is present in the string common pool, then it returns the same instance. So if you go and print the address, it will return true. Now you can now question that in that case, why can't we check string equality in Java using a double equals to only? Because if the contents of the string are same and you just said that, you know, uh, if the contents are same, the JVM will return the same instance, then double equals to should also work. And why do we have to use dot equals to? The answer is, yeah, it is true that if you are using string liter literals and the contents of the string are both same, right? Uh, then you can like use double equals to and it will always return you true. But the problem is, what if someone goes and dynamically creates a string like this? That's a new string, Riddhi and then starts to compare s1 is equals to is equals to s3 in this case it will come out to be false but s1 dot equals s3 will come out to be true the reason is dot equals check checks the contents of the string so in this case the contents are equal but what is th what the double equals to does is it, it checks the address it checks the equality of the two addresses right but in this case whenever you dynamically create a string like this it always it doesn't go to the string common pool it doesn't does the checks it will simply create a new string and a new memory address because you are now using this new keyword anyway to define the string so whenever you would be defining the string using the string laterals right here the string interning or, or the string pooling this is what works. There are two terms which you might get asked in the interview. So there's one called string intern. And this is basically what we call string pooling, right? So this string common pool, which is being maintained is and JVM checking the existence of that string in that string common pool is string pooling. And what is this string intern? So basically, whenever you are uh, like using a literal to define a string, right? Using a dot equals to and then within quotes writing the name of the string, what happens is it, the JVM or the Java compiler internally calls this dot intern method, right? So there is this intern method which returns a string, right? So what this intern method does is it checks in the heap in the string common pool whether that same content of the string is present. If it is, then returns that address of that string, right? And uh, if it is not, then it creates a new string and returns the address. So this intern method, you can call it explicitly, but it is not required. The compiler will anyway do it for you, right? But if you're using this new keyword to create a new string, then anyway, a new instance, irrespective of whether that content is present in the string pool or not, would be created. So therefore, 
it is always advisable to use the dot equals method and not the double equals to and just we are going to see some demo so that you these things get clear to you so let's say we have two strings now that both the strings are being defined using the string literal and their contents are the same so if i go ahead and you know use the s1 is equals to equals to s2 it will print true right now if i use some other string it will like be false because in that case the intern method uh, return false so now basically I, I just commented this line and now let me call out this method that is riddhi dot intern right so it returns a string let me see what it prints since riddhi also comment out this line and let me see now what it prints so it prints riddhi that means this 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 riddhi was already present and therefore i got the reference i got the reference of this particular string where it exists in the memory and now this this is pointing to this particular riddhi right so you don't need to explicitly call this method that the jvm will automatically call uh compiler will automatically call and it will return the instance to s2 so now s2 and s1 are both binding to the same object but what if now uh i do something like this new string riddhi here this intern method won't be called and separate memory address would be created and now if i go ahead and do this you will see it will return false right it will return false because now separate memory address is created that is why it is always advisable to use as one dot equals because it always checks the content of the string irrespective of the address you might not know right how the string was created whether it was dynamically created or it was like created like this so just to be sh double sure you should always equals a dot equals method because the dot equals method will always check the content but this will always check the address so if uh, it is being created using literals then jvm will take care of the string pooling part and it will always return true because it will, if the contents of the string are same it will point to the same address but if if uh, you are using this method you are using a new keyword to create dynamically create a string then in that case uh, the address would be different but then you have to use the dot equals method so it is always advisable to use the dot equals method that's it for the video guys i hope it was insightful if, if you like most such type of short tutorials as well as java tutorials you can go and check out my other videos on my channel where i have made a separate playlist on java and the next video would be on how can you now create a custom immutable object on your own we are going to see in action that string is an immutable class right we saw it right but now how can we create an immutable object or an immutable class of our own what are the properties that we should take care of that's something Something, uh, a topic for the next video so till then stay safe goodbye and don't forget to subscribe to my channel